I am a lapsed neuroscientist who is now a science communicator. And what that means is it means I spend my days and sometimes nights building props and demonstrations to explain scientific phenomena. And over the past 15 years, my team and I, we've done things like build the world's largest lemon battery to show how batteries work. I've live coded explosions on stage to show how computers work. And so what I want to do today is use props and demonstrations to explain how wrong and right work. And we're gonna start with a bit of a test. And of course, there are wrong and right answers. And the first round of this is a quick fire round, okay? So uh, what is this? A window, exactly, it's a window. What is this? A window, it is it? Well, actually, it's a photograph of a window. We've seen enough windows in our lives that we don't need to see a real window. We can see a photograph of a window or even a drawing. And I'm getting some renovations done on my house. I've had some drawings done. And what is this? Yeah, it's a window. We've seen enough windows in our time that we've sort of got this checklist for windows. We go, okay, a window. It is normally rectangle, it has four right angles, it has a window frame, it has a window sill, you can see through it. And we have this checklist for windows. So much so that when one comes along, a little bit of a sneaky angle, our brain goes, aha, maybe that's not a rectangle, but if you go around this end, I promise you, that is a window. And so we have this checklist, and that, you'll be believed to know, is the end of the quick fire round. But it's also the time that we come over here where we can see I've got what is inside of this cardboard box concoction. We can see it on the screen there. And what you can see is you can see a moving window. And there is just one question in this round. How is that window moving, right? How do you see it moving? Now, you probably see it sort of swinging, don't you? It goes in one direction, stops, and then goes back in the other, and then stops, and then goes back in the other. Apart from, if I take this lid off and shine the camera up from the top, you can see that what's actually happening is it's rotating. It's not going from side to side, but if I sit this down, hopefully in the right position, then we should be able to see it oscillating one more time. Now, this works because our checklist for window isn't perfect. What I've done here is this is not actually a window at all. What I've done is using this box, I've blocked out the world of shadows. And instead, I've painstakingly created my own world of shadows onto that 2D piece of card. So your brain believes it's a window. It's checked enough of the I am a window checklist for your brain to go, cool, it is a window. But the thing is, if I just stop it, I can show you that it's not a window at all. It's actually that trapezoid shape. So this side here is much bigger than this side. But the thing is, so it's rotating on that platform, and the reason this works is because your brain knows it's a window, and big bits of windows are always closest. So when it's rotating on the platform and the big bit is nearest to us, it all works fine. But when the big bit is on the back, of the platform, your brain goes, nah, -uh -uh, it's a window. The big bit needs to be at the front. And so it helpfully flips it for us, helpfully. Now, this works because this system of checklists, it's imperfect, but it is a needed system. We are getting bombarded with information. Millions of bits of information are coming into our brain. So we need a way to get that information in, to store it, and then pluck it out when we need it for future thoughts and actions. And we do that with this checklist. And you write checklists, and then they're put in sort of chemical filing cabinets of your brains. And the way that these checklists are made is your checklist looks at an object, and it goes, OK, here are all the features, and then it puts them on the checklist. But the thing is, it's like our brain is always working in quick fire round. The information is coming in just a little bit too fast. So what it doesn't have time for is to look at those things and look at what's important and not. They all just get put on the checklist, which is fine, really, when that checklist is about windows or objects. But we use these checklists for everything in our lives. So what I'd like you to do now is not imagine an object, but imagine a pilot. And there's a process going on in your brain right now 
Well, actually, it's already happened in your brain. What's happened is your brain has gone, pilot, pilot, where did I put pilot? And then it finds it and it pulls it out, and it pulls out that checklist for pilot. And you look at the checklist and you're like, okay, there are things that you know to be true for a pilot. So a pilot flies planes. A pilot knows how to fly planes. But then there's this massive list of like assumed features, things that you know not to be true about a pilot, but they're on your checklist. And this, of course, can lead to stereotypes. So when I got you to imagine a pilot, I bet most of you imagined a white man. Well, actually, I bet you didn't imagine a white man. I bet what actually happened is you sort of imagined a white man, and then you went, oh, yeah, but I know that it's not just white men that can be pilots. I'm not going to fall for that. Instead, what I'm going to do is imagine maybe a white woman or a black woman. But here's the interesting thing. That stereotype that was formed from your checklist still existed in order for you to go against it. And the thing is, yeah, this checklist might be imperfect, but we're conscious beings, right? These checklists, they don't dictate what we know is right or wrong, do they? We're thinking beings, we're conscious beings. So as conscious beings, we can take a big spanner and shove it right into those assumptions, right? Well, I have a little spanner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in to this window here. And this is quite a fiddly job. Ooh, in it goes. What could go wrong? There you go. OK. And I need to get the lighting just right, because what we're going to do is what this spanner will do is it will make those assumptions fall apart. It will make that checklist fall apart, and that checklist admit that it's wrong. And we'll see it as rotating. So there you go. It's rotating. It's rotating. Apart from we don't, do we? You don't see it as rotating. Instead, the checklist doesn't fall down. It sort of doubles down. It's breaking the laws of physics. The spanner is going through the framework. It makes us see the impossible rather than admit that it was wrong. And it feels really weird, doesn't it? It's like your brain knows what it should think, and it knows what is right. You know it's rotating. And yet, this checklist has been so strong that it's making you think something that you don't even want to think. And it makes us feel weird. And sometimes it's funny. And the reason it's funny is because what's happening here is our unconscious checklist is becoming conscious. And what we're being shown is something that we know not to be right, and we don't believe it's right, and yet we can't help but be influenced by it. So your brain no longer knows what is right or what is wrong. And as a human brain, we don't have a response for that. So we laugh. And it is funny, right, when it's about windows. But don't forget, we use these checklists for everything in our lives. So what if it's not about a window? What if this checklist is about pilots, or CEOs, or caregivers, or criminals? Now, we all know what we want to think about those things, but what if our checklist is influencing us to think in a way that we know not to be right. And these checklists, these checklists are cheeky. They form without our knowledge, and they form without our consent. When did anyone sit you down and tell you what is and isn't a window? Or tell you who can and can't be a pilot? It just didn't happen. The way these checklists are formed is they're formed through exposure to the world. And our brain is always looking, and it looks at everything, and it takes everything in, including meaningless slogans on children's clothing, including phrases we say in passing. It takes it all in. And because of how these checklists are made, it doesn't know what's important or not. They all get shoved on there. And this is how checklists are made. It's how our checklists are made. It's how our friends' checklists are made. And it's how our children's checklists are made. So if in 20 years' time, you don't want this world to still be one where just 4% of CEOs are women. Or if you don't want this country to be one where if you're born a man, you're almost three times more likely to die from suicide than if you're born a woman. Or live in a country where one third of the juvenile prison population is black. Then we need to check 
our checklists. And to do this, we need to go towards that weird feeling. We need to go towards that feeling of that spanner going through that window frame. And the thing is, you don't have to go towards these things physically. We can actually visit these situations in our imagination, and it works just as well. So we could all go out for dinner with this nice couple, right? We could go to their house. Or how about this couple? Feel weird, right? I wonder if any jokes will be made. Or we could go to a bar, right? And it's, you know, it's a bit sleazy, isn't it? But it's just part of the job. How about now? And sometimes these situations, they will make us laugh. Sometimes they will make us feel defensive. Sometimes they will make us actually feel aggressive. But it's a really important feeling because this is when our unconscious checklist is getting thrown unexpectedly into our consciousness. And so sure, you could use that moment of feeling weird to have a giggle or get into an argument, or you could use that moment to take advantage of the agency that has been given to you. And you could use that agency to take your checklist, have a look at it, check it, make sure it aligns with your morals, with what you actually want to think, maybe adjust it. And believe it or not, if we do this often enough, then it will actually change the chemical basis of our brain, and so it will change our checklists. So, if we all draw on our imagination, then altered checklist by altered checklist, maybe we can start to alter those horrifying statistics. Because at the moment, we don't stand a chance. Because at the moment, our checklists are wrong. And if our checklists are wrong, how do we ever hope to do what is right? Thank you. <laughs>